Thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Valerie Bradley. I'm Director of Housing, Managing Director of Community Services. I'm here um, for part of my responsibilities as Director of Housing and Community Services to present next year's budget. Housing and Community Services, HCS for short, is comprised of several different divisions. Just a quick reminder, Animal Services, our Public Health Clinic, Volunteer Services, Keep Mesquite Beautiful, Transportation Grant Coordination happens out of our department, and the Housing Voucher Program. Also, the another FUD, HUD-funded program, the Community Development Block Grant Program is coordinated out of our department. We believe that we connect residents to resources. We believe we improve their quality of life through animal services and, uh, and vaccines. We also believe that we inspire residents to leverage our programs to make their own lives better. We do that through 31 employees, a general fund budget of one, about $1.5 million, and grant funding of $14.5 million. Our major challenges for the department is staffing. You all just touched upon it, and I'll start right off with animal services. Um, the entire staff has an increased workload. It's fabulous. It's absolutely wonderful that our live outcome rate is 80%. Um, would have thought it would have taken us a lot longer to get there. It's great. The downside of that is the number of times we have to handle an animal has definitely increased. We, ha we vaccinate all the adoptable animals, um, which, is mo which are most of the animals in the shelter as they come in. That was a new program that you all funded last year. We are so glad to have that program because it allows groups like the SPCA who won't even look at pulling animals out of our shelter, they now partner with us. So it's a fabulous program, but again, added uh, staff time for those activities, added workload. And our work, our work day didn't get any longer, our staff didn't um, get any additional pay other than their regular merit increase. We also added 33 kennels this year. So again, fabulous additions to our shelter. We have been able to um, reduce, uh, increase the live outcome rate of feral cats, and, and that's great. Again, more, more staff intensive. Our animal services attendant position is a low pay, high stressful job with high turnover. In fact, I have four funded positions right now. I don't have a permanent employee in a single one of those. The good news is we are looking into uh, and, and have started this week, in fact, using temporary services, uh, temporary agencies to find temp employees and see if we can't grow those employees before we spend that $500 on extending an offer. So we're looking at other things through our partnerships with HR and with purchasing, but at the end of the day, it's a low paying job and it's very stressful. Uh, our animal services office, officers have an increased caseload as well as all of those other activities that I listed. And there is an interim superintendent. And while I'm comfortable with um, Mr. Ellerson, who is over there, it's a temporary situation, and, and that can be a challenge. Of course, in our grant world, we always want more money because our residents have a high need, especially with the CDBG rehab program. Currently, there are over 100 people on that waiting list. So we will continue to look for funding. Um, over the next two years, we hope to have the bulk of the Animal Services Strategic Plan implemented. We hope to conduct another resident survey to ensure that the needs from the community are being met. We did that this past fall before we did the strategic plan. Very telling. We appreciated that information and cooperation from the residents. We also hope to adjust the advisory board positions and frequency of meetings to have the board transition into more of a policy resource for our staff. Right now they meet three times a year. That makes it very difficult to run day-to-day -day policies by the group. In five years we hope to be the a regional leader in animal services and we're definitely on the way. Um, 
especially with the additional kennels and, and the vaccination program you all instituted last year. Of course, we are here to ask you for some money. I'm, we need an additional officer position at $41,000 and an additional attendant position in the shelter. No matter how you look at it, whether it's spending per capita, the number of animals cared for per officer, or the number of officers per capita, the city of Mesquite is behind in funding when compared to our seven city comparables. The average for spending per capita, as you can see, seven ninety-eight, a full two dollars below, um, almost double on the number of animals cared for per officer, and you can see there almost five thousand animals uh, uh, more officers and, and when we look at officers per capita. We believe by adding these two positions will increase public safety through efficiencies with our staffing and I know that's a goal of, of the City Council. We really would like to see some additional funding so that we can convert all of our positions in the shelter besides the supervisory ones to officer positions. That will do two main things for us. It will allow us maximum flexibility when it comes to moving staff around field or shelter, and uh, th that will go a long way. In addition, right now we have a rotation of five animal services officers for the on-call. I know I've told you all this before, but recall that an animal services officer works a full uh, Monday through Friday shift and also then on top of that has an on-call shift. So it's not like a police officer or a firefighter where they work in odd hours or they work overnight and that's their work time. This is overtime. So by converting these positions from attendants to officers, we can help with some of our burnout. We can have fresher officers be serving in those capacities overnight. We'd like to see us move to mandatory microchipping for all animals that are returned to owner. We call those RTOs. As you can see, I have a zero dollar there because what we pay out for those microchips, we can recoup in the fees that we charge. But we need your concurrence that you want us to um, make mandatory those animals that are running loose in the neighborhoods that we require the owner to get a microchip in that animal. Additionally, a veterinarian on staff would help with the health and well-being of all the animals. Um, it would be an increased cost overall to our current budget of $35,000. Now keep in mind, that's not how much a vet costs. Uh, to, to do this whole program would cost more like $185,000. But the net increased cost because of our fees for adoptions would be $35,000. This is a standard, not that all of our seven city uh, comparables have, but it's definitely moving towards those, several of those um, larger, uh, more professional shelters have. We'd like to fund some trap neuter return surgeries next year, and um, it would be helpful to be able to teach a responsible pet owner class, both on a voluntary basis for folks who are new pet owners and requirements for those who receive citations. This is a quick snapshot of our budget. This is approximately the same funding as we had last year. When you dive into your numbers, you'll see it will be a, look like a decrease of about $400,000, and that is a revenue thing from the grant, the transportation grant that did not hit last year, and it will hit this year. In summary, we have staffing challenges. Um, we're working to overcome those with our partnerships uh, with other departments and um, grant funding challenges, but we think we can uh, meet those challenges with the budget offers that we that I've mentioned here today. Are there any questions? All right. Thank you, Valerie. Any questions for Valerie, Mr. Casper? Uh, we were talking about adding a new uh, attendant and officer, but then we also want to phase out the attendants. We do. Am I following that right? 
You are. I had those two separate asks in case you funded one without the other. Okay. The money in. Never mind. Hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> I, I have. Dennis? Uh, Valerie, regarding what, what do you call that implant thing? What do you. Microchip? Microchip. Yes. Thank you. Um, regarding your. Uh, that and requiring it mm -hmm. on the return to owner yes. animals um, is that is that something we we can we can do with that I mean is that something that would require an ordinance or is that um, if if I get consensus from council we will run those traps with legal and find that out we believe what? we can but the, we'll, uh, we can confirm when, with when legal. an owner comes to pick up a pet that's been. <clears throat> excuse me, picked up on the street, uh, are they required to pay a, a fee, a fine, or something like that? There are fines uh, when... So they yeah. receive, a, like, a citation or something? It's not a citation. They just... Well, it depends on the situation in which we found the animal. There are, sometimes are citations that have to do with roaming free. Sometimes an animal just gets loose. Uh, so sometimes yes, sometimes no. But there are fees when your animal comes to us outside of the citation fees that you pay okay, when so you pick the, up your animal. So the fee for the microchip would be in addition to that Yes, to fee. approximately $10. Oh, so it's only 10 bucks. Right. Okay. I was, for some reason, I thought it would be more than that. No. And what, and what is the, the uh, fine that they're normally charged? I do not know the answer to that question, but I can provide it to council. That's okay. Okay. I'm just curious to know if we if we required that ten dollar chip, and then they had to pay that in addition to the fine. I don't want to run it up so much where they say, "Oh, he's not worth that. I'm just going to leave him here." Right, right. <laughs> we don't either because live outcome is our yeah. whole focus. Um, okay. But we believe ten dollars to be a. That well, seems very reasonable to me. Yes. For the, for that, uh, it's just so much easier to return an animal back to the right place when it's microchipped, and we right. can scan the animal. And even if it's not the exact current owner, maybe it has the vet's information on that chip. It's a lot easier to get back to the owner with that microchip. Right. Well, I, I think it's a good idea. I just didn't want to run the fees up so high where the owners yes, would say, I'm not going to pay that or I can't afford to pay that or whatever. Right. We're sensitive that, to that as well. That's why you see a net uh, some cost asking for the veterinarian on staff as opposed to passing that cost along to the adopters because we believe we're right where we need to be on our adoption fees. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is the, uh, yeah, the one page where you had the animal service budget offers that had a, a red arrow that yes. uh, indicated increased public safety on yeah, that one. Yes. So you gave some stats, uh, spending per capita, showing kind of where we fall on all of those. Is that with or without the budget offers? Without. Okay. Without. What, what, what happens to those numbers when you do the budget offers? That is a good question that I should have come prepared with, but I can get the information to council. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Hello, yeah. just, just a real quick question. It's not necessarily a budget question, but seeing you up here reminded me of the program that we worked out with, I guess, three of our homes last year with Habitat for Humanity. I was kind of curious how, that, how that's come along, and do we have any future opportunities on that type of scenario? Um, that program, I believe, is being coordinated out of the city manager's office, and I will have to pass that question on to Jerry, I believe. I'm talking slowly so that he can gather his thoughts. Or Cliff. <laughs> Are there any more sure. housing and community services questions? Thank you. Okay. You can do it right there. You have a microphone for a reason. Of course, the habit, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Well, the uh, the habitat homes, they're still on the books. They're still coming. It's just been going slow as we work with habitat, but we still have five properties. They are interested in more of the vacant tracks we have, but 
and they've submitted their housing plans and their schematics, and they've exceeded our expectations. So it's just a matter of them getting their resources lined up to begin construction. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Did you say it was five instead of, I th was it three or five? Oh, I'm sorry, it's three. I, I'm cor I stand corrected, no, as we used to say no in the military. Okay. Mr. Okay. Yeah, three. Mr. Dibman had a little procedure a few days ago, so. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> almost off of my medication right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, Jerry.